Well, a very good Sunday afternoon wherever you are. Thank you very much for keeping it Citizen TV. This is Citizen Weekend on this second day of May 2021. We have a couple of stories lined up for you in this uh, bulletin, but first, let's take a look at the top stories. Faithful from five counties which are under partial lockdown resume congregational worship after easing of restrictions. Tanzania President Samia Sulu expected in Kenya on Tuesday for a two-day state visit. The area that, we, that NMS was supposed to deal with, even if it was to deal with in, a, in the right manner, was eight meters from this point to that point. An uproar as NMS flattens property alleged to have been grabbed by a private developer in Nairobi's Lovington estate. Welcome uh, to the broadcast now. President Uhuru Kenyatta yesterday announced the resumption of church services in the five uh, zoned uh, counties, that is, uh, counties of Nairobi, Kajiado, uh, Machakos, Kiambu, and Nakuru. Now, this comes after over a month's break. We are now joined by our reporter, Gatete Njoroge, who's been uh, making several rounds across the city, just looking at how the situation is in the various uh, churches. Gatete, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Maybe you can tell us where you are, first of all, and then tell us uh, how are churches uh, copying with this one-third rule that was uh, announced by the president yesterday. Uh, yes, thank you very much, uh, Wycliffe. Um, uh, I'm at uh, Pefa Church in South B, where a number of worshippers, uh, more than 100 uh, members of this church have uh, attended today's service. This just comes a day after President Uhuru Kenyatta announced that they had lifted the restrictions that they had put where churches had been closed and other social places basically to be able to contain the spread of the virus in the country. And what has been coming out in the, uh, in the few churches that we have been able to visit uh, across the city is that there is, uh, the, the, the men of God are calling on the government to ensure strict enforcement of COVID-19 regulations, saying closing churches is not the solution in terms of controlling the surge, saying that most of them are following the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health, but some are the ones who are actually violating the regulations and are affecting the whole community. So the key message has been enforcement is key so that we don't have a situation where churches are closed after every other time that we have a surge in numbers. Another issue, they are calling on Kenyans to take personal responsibility in terms of being able to contain the virus. But just joining me is Bishop Munai of uh, Pefa Church in South B, who will uh, basically tell us how the service has been. They have just finished their service for today. Basically, Bishop, tell us how was, how was the resumption and uh, basically what are the some of the measures you have put in place, and I don't know what uh, is your appeal to the government because we have been seeing churches uh, have been closed this not the first time. Maybe you just tell us your views, Bishop. Thank you so much, Gatete and Jaroge, and Citizen TV for coming here. Uh, we really want to first of all take this time to thank the president for listening to the cry of the Kenyans, to the cry of the normal Manainji and reopening the country. We really want to thank God that uh, the church has been reopened again and we are grateful to God that the church has reopened. I really want to say that the church we are following all the protocols that have been given to us by the Ministry of Health. We are washing our hands. We are uh, wearing our masks. We are keeping the social distance. We are taking the temperature. You know, in church, we have uh, good brains. We are not drunkard. And you cannot compare the church with the clubs because we know what we do. So I really want to urge the government that... Um, the church should not be closed again. Actually, when we are closing the church, we are allowing this uh, uh, coronavirus to surge even more. And maybe I refer you to the scripture in the book of uh, Second Chronicles, chapter number 7, verse number 13 and verse number 14. The scriptures say, If I shut the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. 
that is what God says. When you close the church, you are allowing this thing to continue. I want us to look at India. India, people are dying. The cremation places have got no place. And it is hard. We want to ask the government not to close the church again. Thank you very much. That is Bishop Munai. We'll uh, still be going around weekly to basically see what's happening in other churches and uh, we'll inform you in our subsequent bulletins. Back to you in studio. Well, thank you very much, Gatete and Jorogi. Of course, we'll be following up on that particular story and we will bring you those uh, details on the happenings in our subsequent bulletins uh, tonight. Now, we're now staying with the COVID-19 containment measures and a section of leaders have welcomed the easing of uh, COVID-19 restrictions announced by President Kenyatta on Saturday. Led by Baringo Governor Stanley Kiptis, the leaders say that the measures will help in reviving the economy and livelihoods. In Nairobi, acting Nairobi Governor said the measures provide new hope for those who are lost employment. Nataka ni mshukuru rais Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta sana kwa sababu siku hii ya leo amekubali shule zifunguliwe watoto warudi shule. Ya pili pia najua watu wengi wameumia katika biashara zao, wengine wamepoteza kazi zao. Ningependa kumshukuru rais kwa sababu ya hiyo sisi pia tuko na madada na mandugu ambao walipoteza kazi zao. And I know going forward, what what Arudi Makazi waeze could provide for their families. COVID is very dangerous. You go If there is anything you can do as a person, na muambie wengine. If there is anything you can do from today, usishikwe na COVID. Wacha raha, wacha ujinga, wacha mambo hiyo yote. Don't joke with COVID. COVID kikushika. It's only God who can save you. Ata kama tumetoa lockdown, jameni, tupate kusingatia yale ambao tuliambio na madakari wetu. Tukukusia kwamba na simo fire mask, kama utaweza kununua shona hata kitamba. Na ufunge bandiri, mambo na kasa. Tutumia mbini yote kusuhia maragari. Pia hiyo social distance, na tuende ni kwa kule machinani, tufanya kazi ya shamba. Shule itafunguliwa hivi karibuni. Najua kuna changamoto ya mambo ya fedha. Lakini Mungu ajuae maisha yetu. Tutikaze, tutafute fedha, tutafute yale ambayo yatasaidia watu wanafunzi kusoma. Maana masomo ni kitu ya maana sana. Well, let's now look at some politics and a section of ODM politicians have exuded confidence that the Senate and the National Assembly will pass the BBI bill next week. CR Senator James Orengo saying Kenyans should brace themselves for a referendum to effect changes to the Constitution. The leaders downplayed kills that rocked the function attended by the CR Senator and Alego Song MP Samuel Atandi, claiming it was a local politics and nothing to do with the BBI politics. Samogina reports. Addressing mourners during the burial of Kezi Obama in Kogelo Village, Siaya County, Orengo asked Kenyans to be prepared to pass the BBI bill during the referendum. In the company of Rarede MP Otiende Amolo, Orengo said ODM party was optimistic that parliament will endorse the BBI bill this week to pave way for the referendum. Mimi niku tetea BBI ipitishwe na ipitishwe na omba na bunge na seneti and we are doing what needs to be done to make sure that when it leaves parliament and it comes to the referendum, it is a document that is properly and thoroughly accepted so that we amend the constitution as it ought to be. The leaders rallying their supporters around the BBA referendum push. They claimed the constitutional review process will act as a bridge to have opposition chief and ODM party leader Raila Odinga become president next year. What I know is that the completion of the journey to Canaan is the day Raila Molo Odinga will take the Bible to be sworn not just as the people's president, but as the lawfully elected president of the Republic of Kenya. The MP said as ODM legislatures, they were prepared to do whatever it takes to mobilize support for the adoption of the BBI bill. With the talk of betrayal within the rank and file of the Orange Party, the leader said they remain steadfast in their support for the BBI push. July, referendum. Mpige kura ndiyo. 
Addressing the chaos that marred their meeting recently, the leaders downplayed the scuffle, said it had nothing to do with the BBI but local political competition. Because political differences will always be there and they must be there. And there is no seat that is permanently for anyone. Because ultimately, people decide this thing at the ballot. What we must not do, what we must not do is bring violence in the mix. Hello? Because if we bring violence, even the people we want to vote for us will be afraid of going to the ballot box. We want to urge all politicians, all aspirants that peace is paramount. And it is important for all of us to observe peace, to ensure that we do not engage in acts of thuggery and violence that in turn could uh, damage the, uh, the, the lives of our people. Some again, sir, than TV. Nairobi. The Judicial Service Commission will commence interviews for those eyeing the position of judge of the Supreme Court on Monday. This after the Court of Appeal overturned a high court decision that had suspended the recruitment process. The panel will interview two candidates on Monday and Tuesday and three on Wednesday. First to face the panel will be Justice Said Chitembwe and Justice Maritin Jagi. Chemtai Goin reports. Only seven of the nine applicants who had expressed interest in the vacant spot on the Supreme Court bench will face the JSC vetting panel. Two who will not appear are nominee for the Chief Justice position, Martha Kome, and Judge Kathurima, who withdrew his candidature following the nomination of Kome, who comes from the same ethnic background as him. Part of the key considerations the panel looks at while identifying suitable candidates include ethnic and regional balance. The three-day schedule will see Justice Said Chitem when Justice Maret and Jaggi faced the panel on Monday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. respectively. On Tuesday, Justice Ndumandari and Dr. Patrick Lumumba will plead their case also at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. respectively. On the third and final day, it will be the turn of Court of Appeal President Justice William Oko, Justice Joseph Sergon, and Ms. Alice Yano, who will be interviewed at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. respectively. Justice Said Chitembwe, who was the first to face the panel in the concluded Chief Justice interviews, came under fire for some of the decisions he made, particularly one touching on the Sexual Offences Act. He boasts of 29 years in the legal profession. The position of Supreme Court judge fell vacant following the retirement of Justice Jack Tonojuang. Once the JSC compiles its report, it will submit to the President the name of the nominee for the onward transmission to Parliament for vetting. Chemutai Goin, Citizen TV. Let's move on and Tanzania President Samia Sulu Hassan is expected in Kenya on a two-day state visit starting Tuesday. President Sulu will hold talks with her host, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, at State House before attending a trade meeting between the two states at a Nairobi Hotel. The visit comes three weeks after she hosted a delegation of Kenyan team led by Sports Cabinet uh, Secretary Amina Mohamed in Dar es Salaam. Sulu had also visited Uganda where she held talks with President Yoweri Museveni and also witnessed the signing of an agreement to build a crude oil pipeline between the two states. Now, residents of Peony Estate in Nairobi's Lovington are up in arms over what they term as illegal demolition by Nairobi Metropolitan Services, NMS. This after NMS officers last night demolished a perimeter and a generator house constructed on what NMS claims is a road reserve along Hadero Road. NMS claims it had a court order to evict the private developer who they say illegally gloved a public land. Claims discounted by the residents who say the contested land belongs to Distirio Oyatsi. We do not have an objection from Hadero Road Association. We do not have an objection from uh, the residents. So this 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 is like an, a dead end. So uh, so the area that we, that NMS was supposed to deal with, even if it was to deal with in, a, in the right manner, was eight meters from this point to that point. But they ended up taking up another. 90 to 100 meters 
why were they going into pri private pr private uh, property so that is actually what we are trying to say that stressing the point that this is uh, this is impunity and and and, and uh, destruction of uh, public pr uh, private property we will obviously seek uh, we are law abiding citizens and we will uh, seek redress uh, in, the, in the in the in the in the justice system and we hope that we can get uh, restitution and you can get compensation and have this matter settled properly through our legal systems. Thank you. From Nairobi, let's now move over to Busia County, where a section of leaders in the county have faulted sugar millers in the region for purchasing sugarcane from brokers at the expense of local farmers. Led by Nambale MP John Bonyasi and Privatization Commission Chairperson Dr. Paul Tuoma, the one millers to source cane directly from the farmers. Speaking in Butula, they say millers must embrace the regulations set up by the Ministry of Agriculture on cane prices. <laughs> Right now we have a very good uh, prescribed price by the government. Why are you denying these people? If, for heavenly sake, these farmers are not there, what are you going to do with your, with your meal? I want to take care of our farmers further. The government has been able to take care of our farmers and our farmers and to show at least una benefit kutoka ile jasho yako ile jasho ambayo umetoa katika shamba lako at least inakupa ridhaa ya kuweza kusomesha watoto wako kuweza kujihudumu kimaisha so hii mambo ya kuanza kutumia brokers kuweza kutoa miwa kwenu na kuanza to hold you at ransom mtu anakata miwa yako alafu wakati hiyo ndio anaanza kusema kaa si bei hii anawacha kwa shamba tafadhali mjahadari na mambo kama hayo Governors have been urged to spearhead climate mitigation programs in their respective counties towards addressing climate change in the country, as evidenced by the rising water levels in lakes in the Rift Valley and droughts in northeastern parts of the country. Now, speaking during the launch of a two million tree planting exercise in Kajado, Devolution CS Eugene Omalo loaded Kajado County for passing the climate change bill that will enhance the campaign towards achieving 10% forest cover. The Council of of governors has taken up the initiative to plant over two billion trees. Tungependa kila county iweze kuweka mikakati, iweke sheria, iweke sera, iweke pia uh, ile fund, climate change fund ambayo itakabiliana na mambo hayo kwa kila kaunti yetu. Mambo ya carbon credit vile tunaweza kurudishia wananchi wetu ambao wana hifadhi misitu warudishiwe kitu kidogo pia waweze kujisaidia iwe ni kuwapatia stima katika mabomba zao, kuwapatia cooking gas, iwasikate miti, kuwapatia mabarabara. Now cross borders to Somalia where the country's lower house of parliament voted unanimously on Saturday to cancel a divisive two-year presidential term extension it approved last month. The lower house vote was broadcast on Somali television and came shortly after President Mohamed Farmajo addressed parliament and said he was directing his prime minister to spearhead preparations for the election. Farmajo's term expired in February but wrangling over elections meant a new crop of legislators were not selected to choose a new president. The term extension was approved by lower house lawmakers last month. Welcome back to Citizen Weekend. Let's now get sporty. And Kenya finished runners-up in the 2x2x400 two by two by meters relays mixed at the World Athletics Relays in Silesia, Poland on Saturday night. The Kenyan duo led by 800 meters specialist Ferguson Rotich and Naomi Korir clocked a season best time of 3 minutes, 41.79 seconds, finishing behind the eventual winners Poland. Slovenia was third. The 2x2x400 two by two by meters mixed relay is a unique track event 
event where each team member is required to run 400 meters twice in a relay format. Kenya finished third in the shuttle huddles relay, clocking a season best time of 59.89 seconds. The race was won by Germany.